friend, it's Pat Sloan here. So I've got the cozy shirt on, the long sleeves, right? In the, the Sloan zone. Ta-da! <laughs> it's nice, nice and cozy because it's quite crisp out. Very crisp. <laughs> Very, got a little chill in the air. <laughs> So before we get to the Quilted Witches block three and talking about the Autumn Woods setting, uh, a few other things. So you, you gave such amazing quilt show at Quilt Along with Pat Sloan on Halloween with all of your Halloween quilts. We had spooky ones. We had, I, there was just so many awesome quilts. And when you go to look, if you're interested in where the person did the pattern, if they didn't say in their description, look in the look in the comments because somebody will have either listed where it is. Um, you know, people will share a post and they may not be on Facebook again for another whole day. And so, you know, if you ask, they might come back later the next day when they come back on. You know, sometimes people just get on there once a day. So, you know, look in the comments because there's usually somebody else who knows what it is and links to it and you can get the information. There were also lots of great thrifty quilting tips. I do want to go through those and pull some, but I haven't had time. I've been kind of uh, busy. <laughs> I've seen, seen for, for whatever reason, I feel like, oh, you know, so I have, I was uh, reading through some of them, enjoying them, but I haven't collected anything up to share. I'm not sure if I will or not, because um, sometimes it's just fun just to go there and look. So be sure you go and check out Quit Along with Pat Sloan at Facebook for all the fun, all the fun, all the time. We had a wonderful card in the mail. This one is from Diane in New York. Okay, so it's called Quilting Show and Tell Today. So, <laughs> can you see? So the comment is, so who's going to tell her? You know, can you see it? Do you see it? There's the one flowers upside down. Like, <laughs> who's done that? <laughs> now, I hope not too many hands do it when you've actually got the quilt quilted so i don't know we can't tell if that one's quilted well i hope it's just the top so it's an easy fix and also the note was so sweet and she diane sent this nice yummy starbucks card mwah, mwah, thank you so many of you write wonderful notes with your your cards that you send me it's just they're so amazing greg and i read them all and i really appreciate all the thought that you put into your notes um the stories you tell me it's just it's just so cool mwah, love it love it there are some celebrations today, you know, every day of the year, there are multiple celebrations. So let me just tell you a couple of them. One is looking for circles. Now as quilters, we have circles on our quilts, don't we? So if you have a quilt with circles on it of some sort, my favorite are those log cabins that look like circles, those log cabin blocks that look like circles. So show your circle blocks. And the other is uh, celebrating, there's tons of other ones, but celebrating ballet day. Okay, I am going to show you, this quilt is waiting in the queue for its binding, and I'm not gonna tell you how long it's been waiting. It, it's been more than a day, uh, a while. But there, do you see the ballerinas? I just fell in love. I think that might be Heather Ross's fabric, a little ballerina fabric. I took ballet lessons as a really little girl. Um, you know, like, you know, I, all I can remember is standing at the ballet bar, you know, like having to put your foot out and doing something like this. Of course, I love the tutu, you know, the little tool tutu and the tights. <laughs> but I didn't enjoy, I didn't enjoy practice. I am, I have, I, it's apparently not enjoying practice is something that uh, is ingrained in you. I do not enjoy practicing now either. I don't enjoy practicing anything. I'm not good with practicing. Let me just get the project, give me, let's just get to the project. We don't need to be practicing anything. <laughs> so let me show you this. I'll hold it up. It has got gorgeous oranges in it. I believe and I'll look, I'm pretty sure this is a pattern. That's a free pattern at the Fat Quarter Shop. I may, I don't, I, I put some leftover corner units, you know, like there's, this is big, but you can see in the corner, I've got some half square triangles, but the block, and I don't know if the block has this sashing or not. I fussy cut a dot into the cornerstone of all the sashing. And then on the back, I have this fabulous, um, really old Amy Butler print floral with the polka dot. And the polka dot, I believe, was also an Amy Butler fabric from years ago 
when Amy did amazing, amazing fabrics. And so I just love this. I should put it up to the top of the list. The one thing I'm also going to do, I'm digressing here, but I need to order another quilt ladder. I have one in my living room, that one in my living room. I'm gonna put one in my bedroom, so I'm gonna order that. And when it comes, I'll show it to you. Uh, so that's on my list. Let's talk about this sashing. One of the things is I'm wondering whether I like the black or whether I should have gold there to make it pop a bit more. And it's going to have the apples as a um, border, the light colored apples. So let me just put that up on the wall too and take a look and then we'll look at some, uh, you know, think about it, hold on. So there you can see it with the apple. There'll be this white print this white print, the same as I'm using, it'll be up, you know, there'll be a frame around it and then the apples. And I might actually put another frame. I might, maybe I'll take some of the gray or something. Maybe I'll, I'll do the white and then maybe I'll do gray, which is not on the pattern, but I'm, these fabrics might just lend themselves to having another border, a little border around it to break between the, this fabric and that one. So we'll see, but there's the black and I auditioned a gold over on the end. So, I don't know. There'll be a lot of gold if I do that. You know, the gold will really, because it's light, like this is science. Light colors will come towards you, darks will recede. Um, so I don't know. And then I was thinking, well, maybe I should do every other one. A gold, you know, gold, black, gold, black. So I could, I could cut, I could sacrifice. I have enough of the gold. I could sacrifice a few pieces and try that. Let me try that. Well, there's alternating the light, the gold, and the black, which I actually kind of like. I kind of like that. Ay, 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 that, that's kind of cool. It gives it a little brightness in there. And I'm thinking versus having all black or all gold. And then it looks kind of like a pennant, you know, like that's what I was sort of going for. And of course it'd be repeated down here. Now, of course I've made all the black and white high square triangles, but that's okay. I'm all right with that. I'm all right with that. I probably should have auditioned first, you know, rookie mistake again, but I'm good with that. Let us, let us go on the other side of the table for a minute and talk about some things. There are so many ways that you can approach your quilt making and approach your blocks and approach the fabric selection. And sometimes I go in and go like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I'm at this layout, I'm like, Ooh, what about this option? What about that option? I don't know what's with me on this one, but it is. And that's just the way it goes sometimes. Uh, and it's a fun process. I don't mind it. I'm having to film it so you get to see all of it. If you've ever watched like the garden answer, Laura at the garden answer, if you watch that, she'll come through sometimes and tell you, you know, this set of plants died because I forgot to turn the water on or I thought the water was on and it wasn't and they sat out here and you know 110 degrees for three days and weren't getting any water so they didn't make it you know this is the things that for gardeners things die they just do for quilt makers things have questions or there are changes or you look at something and now it doesn't look in real life as the fabrics cut down it doesn't look like what you were planning it to look like in your head or what you thought it would look like. It's just all of the process. And that's what I like to show you here on my channel. You know, my videos, I want to show you the real life decision making as it's happening, as I'm going through it for mine, because you're going to go through it with yours as well. Maybe not on this one, might be on the next one or the one after or the one you just finished, um, but we all do it. You can't come in to every project and everything falls into place immediately. Uh, so I find it interesting and kind of fascinating and kind of fun to see how it changes. Just like, I wasn't sure that every other color I would like it, but I really do. I'm looking at it here as I'm talking to it because I can see it on the wall. <laughs> see my view? This is my view. Try not to make you sick as I go around. There you go. See, this is what I can see. I can see it back here. So, okay. Let me show you some different things. Let me talk, talk to you with the, with the fabric here because 
there are, you know, I, I did write the pattern with half square triangles. And I do that because half square triangles are fairly universal unit. Most of you have made them a ton of times, so they're easy to make versus flying geese. Flying geese with the sew and flip method creates um, more waste or extra pieces that you may not want to have when you're doing half square triangles. There's really no extra pieces, just little bitty, there's little bitty strips like this when you're trimming, you know, that's it. You don't have this big chunk of a half square triangle left over like a flying geese would be for, with this type of a, of a um, construction, you know, with the sew and flips, which I'm gonna show you in a second. So that's why I approach it like this with, with half square triangles. This is also a free pattern, so I'm not going to put in all kinds of detailed levels for flying geese. Anyway, that said, because this is directional fabric, I either have to make I either have to live with some being sideways like this. See, like the goose is sideways, the everything sideways, the little hedgehog sideways. I either have to live with that or I have to make double or use some other method. And um, so, you know, I'm thinking now if I'm going to switch the gold, I'm going to go ahead and do the flying geese units for the gold. And then that way I can maybe get most of the black, the, the black ones where the, the black and white print is right side up. You know, I can, I can mix and match. And I'll have then some leftovers, but I'll use, I'll use half of them and the other half I won't use. But to do the flying geese, you'll want a three and a half by six and a half inch rectangle and two three and a half inch squares. And that's, and you're gonna have some waste then. But to, um, audition this. Do I want to? Do I want to see? There's. There they are. There's the the watering can is right side up. So I put this down here, and I know this is the direction. So I can pin it, and now I have the bunnies on this one. And so if I put it this way, the bunnies are what? They're upside down. So you can see that didn't that didn't work as I need them to work. So that means the bunnies have to go be from this side. I didn't press that yet. Ignore that non-pressed section. So here now, the bunnies right side up. And I actually need to do it upside, upside down from this because the point is at the bottom. Okay, so the point needs to be down there. All right, here we go. Here we go, never mind that one part. Okay, back, back to the, back to this. All right, and in this case, to get them right side. There we go. You can see the shovel and the watering can. All right, so the point is, the, the, the long edge is the top on this flying geese. So I want to put these correctly. So that's what I'm going to do. Three and a half by six and a half and three and a half inch squares for, um, what do I need? One, two, three, four, eight, eight of these so I can do a mix and match of the colors. And so that's what I'm gonna do. That'll be super, super cool. I'm happy with that. <laughs> now I'm gonna uh, make some room here, put some things to the side and talk to you about the Quilted Witch's Garden. The Quilted Witch, the Quilted Witch's Garden, if you're not making the witch. Now I am going to be going a little bit um, different pace because two things. One, I want to get it done a little bit quicker. I don't have as big a quilt we're not making and we aren't doing the witch. So by the time we get to the witch part, we'll be making a whole different sort of set. We'll take the blocks and adding, uh, you know, adding sashings and things differently. And so I am going to be doing three times a month, three weeks of the month, we'll do a witch section. Uh, and sometimes it's one block, some, most of the time it's going to be multiple blocks. And then once we get to the garden kind of area where there's, we're, we're replacing the witch, it'll be a lot of, it'll be some blocks you've already made and then sashing to put it together. And you can see that in the pattern, it's all, it's all laid out for you in the pattern uh, layout that I did and the alternate layout that I did. Plus we have some leaf blocks to make that are extra bonus to go in because it's a garden, a fall garden. Uh, so this week though, we are still on track. Up until we hit the witch, we're still following the blocks exactly like the book. And so I want to, let's talk about what we have this week. It's one of my favorite, well, probably my favorite block, a churn dash. And so here we go. So this week we are doing six churn dash blocks. Uh, and each of these, if you, you can see the picture here, they have got a background, a corners, 
the horizontal bars, and then a different fabric in the center. And you could do that many. That's one, two, three, four different fabrics. You could do four fabrics. You could do, you know, do something different. What I am going to do is all of mine, I am not going to use the background fabric for this. I'm not going to use this at all. I am going to make the blocks using um, either the creams, some of them with the cream, and some of them with the aqua as the, as the backgrounds. So that's what I'm going to do, some combinations like that. So let's put some together. And do I want to have the center different or not? Like a traditional churn dash, which we just did in the autumn woods, uh, would have just two fabrics. Everything for the, to make a solid dash would be one fabric, and then the center and the, and the background would be a second fabric. But it's kind of fun to mix it up, especially if you have a bunch of fabrics you want to sort of play around with. And so if I wanted to, let's say, use one with the plaid, because you know how I love that plaid, and then maybe I'm going to do orange um, triangles. We'll do orange triangles, and then do uh, chocolate brown dashes you know on it like this so that would be that would be the talk and then I would maybe I'm probably going to keep the centers the same as the background I don't think I'm going to change it uh, maybe here and there maybe I'll change a couple of them maybe two of them and four of them I won't because they're just six so what I'm going to do here is lay out six different combinations and let's take a look so I have six combinations three of them aqua backgrounds and three of them the cream color backgrounds. So I get the plaid and I want to keep a strong tonal, tonal. I don't want these to have the bigger, the bigger prints with the plaid. I want to have those small scale prints. And then over here I have a bigger scale, the bigger scale floral with the orange and same again. I want to keep these as the tighter, smaller prints. And then here now I have a larger scale high contrast high contrast, white to brown, and then I've got that aqua. And so they'll pop off there really nice, but then I kept this as the tonal, that um, word text. Up here, I'm going to bring the word text again, up with the acorn block, high contrast, bigger scale against a very low contrast background. Uh, for the plaid, for the orange plaid, it'd be orange and orange. Uh, I think that one's so cute. And then for the pumpkin, I'm just going to repeat these two guys up here. For this is the background. And I'm going to go ahead and keep the middles all the same with all of these fabrics. So I've got all six of them, and now I will cut them and so I can get them sewn. These turned out so cute, so cute. I love how the variety and especially using the two fabrics and then the background all the same. I think that worked out super good. This one's a little blendy, which you know, I'm kind of okay with that. I think it's kind of fun to have one of them every so often that just gives that little bit different look. And of course, these will be sprinkled around. This is the Quilted Witch and they are sprinkled around so they're not actually together in this quilt. They're sprinkled around the whole quilt. And while I was doing this, I did work on these um, flying geese and a couple of the half square triangles for down here. Uh, they're almost done. These two still need sewn and then I'll work on that top one. So I got a lot done there as well. I'm happy with that. Before we wrap up, I went ahead and took the ballerina quilt outside and hung it on the line. So let's take a look. So let's go see the ballerina quilt. I can tell you I am definitely not a film producer. Definitely, definitely not. Uh, so I put it out here, hung it up, took pictures, and then took it all down, took it in, and was thinking, well, how am I gonna show that in the video? And I'm like, duh. So I brought it back out, hung it back up, and <laughs> here we are. Now we can see it on the video. Oh my goodness. So now that you can see it full, the full quilt, like I used up all the ballerina fabric that I could. So I put these strips on the side because there was not enough to do the whole border. And then these were sew and flip leftovers done in all four corners. There we go, see, all four corners. And I've got, fussy cut, this polka dot fabric. Now around the back, I just love it, just love it. Now that is older fabric. I don't remember the line. But, um, you know, there's always cute fabric out there. You'll find some ballerina fabric. 
and there is the backing which is vertical I think I was holding it the other way when I, we were in the house so there we go now she needs binding I have this stripe where is it here this stripe I have it all cut and ready to do so I'm going to leave this out and see if I can get the binding on well I know I can get it on it's just will I make myself do it I think so I think it's time I don't know what I was thinking when I put all that up and then took it all down and realized I could have done the video. Oh well, dunk dunk. <laughs> it's just, oh, you can tell I'm not a video producer, as I said. All right, my friend, I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.